Hello, beautiful human. I am Zach. That is Dan. We welcome to the studio. Do I call you by your real name or do I call you by your handle? What, what do you want? Jake. 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 I, I won't give the full name of yours, which is a beautiful name. You run, you run from your full name, even though it's like three names combined. Jacob Shane Roscoe. Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. Jesus, it sounds like a, a high fashion brand. I know. Well, p I started going by Jake Shane because like when I made a Facebook in seventh grade, I made it to <laughs> Jake Roscoe and my mom told me I couldn't do that. She was like, you can't put your first and last name on the internet. And <laughs> then I, 10 years later, created an account called Pass That Puss. So... <laughs> And now look at you. I know. And now I'm being interviewed by Zach Sang. <laughs> Octopus Lover 8. Jake Shane is here. Hey. Yes. Woo. Yes. Right. I'm so short. My feet don't even touch the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, I see you on the internet, obviously. And I kind of had a feeling that you weren't of the, the longest length. Right. But then I was really surprised to see that you played volleyball. Oh, my God. You play on How the. How did you find that out? You first of all, everything about you is on the internet. Uh, I'm kidding, joking. <laughs> but like, there's enough. Uh, but you played volleyball. Was that like? I'm just so. Why they? You were shorter then than you are today. Why did they let you on? Okay, because <laughs> I needed an outlet for my anxiety because I wasn't taking meds back then. I'm on them now. Snaps for them. <laughs> <laughs> snaps for them but I wasn't in high school and everyone was like god you know you need to do like a sport to get into college and I was oh. like what I was like okay I'll manage the girls volleyball team <laughs> and they were like no like you should probably play and I was like oh okay <laughs> and so I tried out and I was atrocious <laughs> like atrocious <laughs> like you guys but I thought I was Destiny Hooker, who, if you don't know, was an Olympian. <laughs> but I thought I was her. And I was libero, obviously. And I missed every ball that came my way. <laughs> and I played for three years. <laughs> three years. And I made it my entire personality. <laughs> yes. So, okay. While you're living this life as a jock, are you balancing an obsession with pop culture or what is this? It's giving uh, Troy Bolton a little bit. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I was always, I, it wasn't there. I was never a jock. Just, I went to like a really progressive school. Mm. So it was like, I was never like shameful of what I enjoyed or who I liked or whatnot. I mean, Taylor Swift is on you. I know. Eras tour. Have you gone? I've gone once in Vegas. And what was it like? Magical. Huh? Magical. She. It's a play. It's a three and a half hour play where she sings and dances for three and a half hours. It is big. Like I've seen the TikToks. It, have you been? No. Are you gonna go? Maybe. Maybe. I got. I, it's hard to get tickets. Like I gotta get an invite. Like you, to get. I'm, not, I'm no octopus lover. Eight to get on that list takes power and sway. Right. I do the Ticketmaster way. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, I do the Ticketmaster way. <laughs> I remember buying tickets. I was on it. I had it on three computers <laughs> and it crashed and I got really upset. And then they were like, okay, we're redoing it to 2 p.m. So then I had an extra computer open and I got tickets. It was like, a, oh my God, did you just see my leg? I like, triggered it. <laughs> um, I, it was like a whole day thing. But like, you know, it's for Taylor Swift. And it's the Eras tour. You're stronger because of it. Oh my God. So much stronger. L Qs mean nothing to me now. <laughs> Unless you're in a queue with millions of people fighting for your actual life, nothing. Nothing. I'll wait on any line. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> the world is filled with lines. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Even in my poetry that I've been writing lately. So is poetry an outlet to manage anxiety and OCD? Yeah, honestly. Well, okay, because I'll tell you when it started. The other day, I lost my luggage. Yeah, I, I saw the story. Yeah. I lost my luggage, and I was like, I literally am so angry with JetBlue. Like, how do I channel this? Like, Taylor Swift writes songs when she's angry. I cannot sing, so I'm going to write a poem. I actually wrote you a poem. Wait, okay. I want to hear it. So, you... Your OCD and anxiety in high school, you use volleyball to channel it yeah. for three years. Yeah. You take on a jock persona. Uh, then, now, 
you realize that the way to manage your OCD and anxiety, which I'm assuming is heightened because you're famous. It's, it's incredibly heightened. Uh, it's like horrible. But did you want this? Yeah, so badly. I still do. You kind of just have to deal with the downfalls. You manage it. Yeah. Through poetry. You know, you can't have it all. Yeah. And like, <laughs> do you, you know, really though? Yeah. Oh my God. I'm Louise. Do I not write poems all the time? Yeah. Once every 30 minutes? I wrote a poem this morning because I was anxious and in a bad mood. Are they That's... good Are they good poems or are they just poems? Well, can I read you one? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, please. Wait, this is amazing. So you, re- like, once you get it out, does it put a period on your feelings or does oh, it not at all. rationalize but it? But what it does is it gets a few giggles out of people oh. and that makes me feel better. <laughs> okay, you ready? Okay. Zach sang. <laughs> was it you that rang? My phone the morning. I woke up in France. I thought... There's no chance. Or was it prior when we first connected? I couldn't have been higher. My anxiety, I deflected. I said yes, and we set a date. If you had to guess, did you think I'd be late? Now I'm here in the month of the queer, and I sit here and wonder, will I be a star or blunder? Wow, that was snaps to that. That was beautiful. I have goosebumps. Thank you. I wrote it like an hour ago. Wait, that's... Just for you. That was really nice. Thank you. I love writing poems. Wait, that... Okay, so you... <laughs> you get that out yeah <laughs> but do you not feel good until you share with somebody or is there any sense of release getting it out into your notes oh out? no sometimes when I write like a bar I'm like <laughs> yeah I'm like uh huh and that just like gets it all out like I wrote the sickest <laughs> one the other day and I looked at it and I was like oh. next question next <laughs> feeling like we're done. Why did you just stumble upon this now? Like, I like. Why didn't you seek poetry earlier? Such a good question. Um, I don't know because my mind's like thinking about like forty million different things at once, and sometimes it takes situations where like I'm actually like, okay, like there's like when I lost my luggage, I was like, there is nothing I can do right now. Like she is gone. Like, she ran away. Like, I don't know where, like, apparently a little boy took her. Like, I don't really know. And I'm like, there is nothing I can do. And I was listening to Taylor Swift, and I was like, ugh. Like, I wish I could sing. Like, I wish I could sing. And I was like, but you know what I can do? I can write a poem. And? And I wrote a poem about JetBlue. And now you have a whole new way to get your feelings out. Mm -hmm. Because it used to be through, like, the skits I would do. But sometimes, like, I get really bad social anxiety, so I can't, like, act in public all the time. Like, I can write poems anywhere. And I can it's between you and your phone. Like, it's, it's between me and my, yeah, me and myself. I can write them in my head without even putting them down anywhere. That's interesting. Like, yeah. you start this whole online journey by reviewing Octopus. Mm-hmm. I'm just, what, was Octopus just a funny food animal? Um, me and my mom... You used to eat it in high school. Like, it was like a thing. Like, I was like, oh, it's, this is really good. She was like, yeah, it's kind of sick. And I was like, okay, like, like when we, ha- when, we go- when we would go to, like, Broadway plays, like, because I grew up in New York, she would, we would go to this, like, northern Italian spot. And, like, that's when I first started eating octopus. And then I honestly thought, I didn't really think, because I didn't think of it much as a delicacy. Like, I didn't think people ate it that much. And then I got to college and... My friend Drew abbreviates, like, everything. Like, everything. And so she would say, like, she was like, oh, my God, I love octopus, too. So we started sending each other photos of the octopus being, like, puss, puss. And I'm like, God, like, how funny would it be if I did, like, pass the plate but pass the puss? She's like, genius, hilarious. I'm like, okay, right. So I did it. I I made the account. And then pass the puss was taken. Oh. I was like, by who? <laughs> Someone like, else who's passing the puss. Literally by who. And then I made past that puss, which honestly, lucky me, it has a better ring. Yeah. And I deleted it because I was like, okay, so people are going to think I'm in porn. <laughs> or, yeah. So I deleted it because I was getting a bunch of texts like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, okay. And then I was at dinner a few months later with my friend's mom for her birthday. And her mom and her dad thought it was so funny. And I was like, and I've always been the type to like, like think like adults. And I mean, I've grown to learn that this isn't as true, but I've always thought like adults 
children are like separate. Mm. And I viewed myself as a kid. So if the adults thought it was normal and cool, then I would run with it. And so I ran with it. And for the first year, I had like 200 followers and I literally just reviewed puss all around the town. And then someone was like, you should bring it to TikTok. And I brought it to TikTok and then nothing really happened for some time. And um, then I just started spam posting like anything I could think of because I was like, what what is there to lose? I mean, <laughs> nothing and everything at the same exact right, time. Exactly. I guess I, I guess I, like I don't know what place I was in mentally, but I was like just posting like 10, 15 times a day. And then I saw Julia Fox do this thing where she was like, um, please comment something you want me to act out and I'll act it out. And I was always really passionate about acting as a kid. And so I just did it kind of for shits and giggles. Like obviously not thinking that like this would happen. Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. Oh my God, that was the first one. Yeah, it changes your life. It changed my life it, entirely. And I mean that. That's it, it is wild to think that this started as you wanting to talk about octopus and now you really can, if you want, I'm assuming, have an actual acting career, correct? I mean, I I hope so. I'm really superstitious, so I never say anything for certain. But yeah, that's the goal. I would absolutely love to do that. I've been taking classes and, you know, just trying to hone my craft, make sure I'm the best I can be. What do you learn about acting from TikTok? Is there anything? From TikTok? Or uh, from the videos that you're making? Like, I learned to, like not watch myself I can't watch myself back like I wouldn't I need other people to watch it because if I because sometimes like like you have a really like warped view of yourself like I did something the other day and I was like Oscar for me like <laughs> now like immediately and I sent it to everyone or I actually FaceTime my friend Julia and she was on the screen and I was like showing her <laughs> and I was like and she's like She's like, it's not funny and you did a bad job. And I was like, oh, okay. So like everyone else's opinion of you is what matters in this world. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's quite the, it's an Udo reverse. I don't like, that's something. It's true. It is true. If you want to occupy the space and be in the public eye, yeah. then the public public's opinion is what matters. But at what point do you stay true to you? while also filtering the public's opinion and remaining, I don't know, somewhat attached to the core values that you were brought up on that like still are pillars of your existence and being. Well, that's what I, that's what I try to do now. And that's like something I've struggled with. Like, for example, the week that everything happened, like I used to be so candid, like with like just my anxiety and how I was feeling. And the week everything happened for me, it was like, a game time decision of, okay, well, going forward, am I just going to continue to take my meds and my like daily vlogs or am I going to stop? Am I going to continue to like smoke and tell you about it or am, am I going to stop? And then I just kept doing it because I was like, honest to God, like if I'm going to be here and I'm going to have people laugh at me and think I'm funny, like I'm going to be what I was before they knew who I was. That's the best way to be. Yeah. Because then it's like, why am I here if, if I'm just pretending to be someone that I'm not? Putting on a character, an outfit, a personality outfit every day is really challenging. It's exhausting. And yeah. I did it for so many years of my life. Before this moment, I'm assuming. Yeah, all I want, because, like, you know, like, I grew up in the suburbs and you just want to be, like, cool and accepted. You want everyone to like you. Yeah, you play on the boys' volleyball team for exactly. three years. I played on volleyball. <laughs> like, in what world? Like, no, I was convinced, by the way, when I played volleyball, I was like, colleges will recruit me. <laughs> They're already calling. I was like, this is my calling. Like, I am a volleyball player, period, point blank. <laughs> like, I would you're, watch college, like, everything. You're five foot one. Five foot three. <laughs> three. Sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, I am <laughs> exceptionally short. But you want to be accepted. Yeah, still, always. But isn't there some peace in finally being accepted for exactly who you are? Of course. By people you don't even know. A world over. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just weird because I thought when, um, cause I'm like very insecure. So I thought like the, like I've always wanted like the spotlight. I, I've always, ever since I was a kid, like I've always wanted to perform. I've always wanted to make people laugh. I thought that when that moment came, everything would shift in my brain and I would just view life differently. Like I would, like I wouldn't view it as pessimistically as I have been. 
but none of that happened. Like I st- I'm still the same. So it's all about like, it's like, oh, it's like a wake up call. It's like, okay, no one else's opinion of you is going to help you feel better about yourself. The only way that you can feel better about yourself is to like work on yourself. How do you do that? Therapy, working out, talking to friends, like being honest. It's the only thing I can do. It goes a long way. Yeah. Writing poems. <laughs> I like that for you. Yeah, I love it. It's like my new personality trait, which I have every other week. Because I have OCD, I become very fixated on things. What was the last thing you were fixated on? Honestly, I like I'm gonna say yesterday I went through like a ten minute period where I was like clinically obsessed with Ariana Grande. Yeah. And I was like, Well, that's what I was saying. And I watched her her interview here, the one where during her Thank You Next era, because we were listening to Thank You Next in the car. And I was like, Oh, what a legend. And I just like (laughs) became clinically obsessed for like 10 minutes but usually like um it's usually a female pop star that i just become like completely and utterly attached to but but it's only for like small increments of time or no, the taylor swift one's lifelong Got it. but like for example like i went through um a really long phoebe bridgers phase and then i went through um a pretty long like a really really long amy winehouse phase and then like uh, yeah like you know and then uh, Li- uh, Lily Allen, I was a huge fan of, still am. But yeah, I just, and then it's like the only stuff I listen to. Oh, he, big Lana Del Rey guy. Do you think your OCD has fueled at all the online success you've been able to build? Yeah, of course, because I, it allows me, it's like a double-edged sword kind of, it like allows me to be so like, I don't know, like diff different in a sense and like so obsessive and people like are able to find those obsessive thoughts funny and they like are funny until they're like not funny and then it's like uh, you know what I mean yeah do you obsess over data uh yeah especially when like you have people I don't know like it's it's just weird like TikTok success is so it it's so I mean the TikTok team has been so supportive and so kind to me but online success always feels so like fickle, yeah, so fleeting. I was gonna say fleeting, yeah. Yeah, it's like always, it feels it. like I'm holding on to like a golden pole that's really slippery. Like that's what it feels. That's like the only way I know how to describe it. So that has to fuel anxiety oh to my, new heights. Yeah, like, this morning I was like, like freaking out. Like I don't know, and it's like so sad. I feel like I'm in a Black Mirror episode sometimes. I'm like, why do I care? Cause I didn't care before, but why do you care? I don't know. Cause I'm, I'm, Oh, I'll tell you why. Cause my number one fear always since I've been little is like being forgotten. I'm always scared. People are going to forget about me. Always forget about me in plans. Forget about me in this, forget whatever. So like this took that and just blew it up. Yeah. Imagine. And now I'm scared about like a lot of, a, a lot of people forgetting. Yeah. About the whole me. world forgetting about me. Yeah. It is terrifying. It's so scary. It's so scary. And I know it sounds so lame, but like it really is so scary. It's scary because it's most of your eggs are in the basket. Yeah. That everybody else is carrying except for you. Yeah. But you have some ability to kind of at least, I don't know. Like you can control your own destiny to a certain degree. No, of of course. Absolutely. You control everything. You control the way you react to situations, how you react to your anxiety, which is something I'm working on. Like, you know, it all takes time. Have you acted in anything real yet outside of TikTok with your um, friend filming? No. I, I Oh, well, I mean, like, I was a theater kid. So you that counts musicals? for something. What yeah, did you do? Thoroughly Modern Millie. Oh, classic. Yeah, it was iconic. Oh. And then I did like uh, Pride and Prejudice. And, oh, wow. You know, Look at you. The classics. <laughs> <laughs> the classics. But yeah, no, nothing, nothing really, which is also scary. So that's why like when I like come into a place like this and I'm like, yeah, I want to act. It's like you're scared that no one's going to take you seriously because you see how the internet treated past people that um, like – how to rise on TikTok or YouTube. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, with Justin Bieber, they were like, well, what in what world are you going to find a pop star off YouTube? And then with Shawn Mendes, you're like, okay, but he's just from Vine. So, like, but now look at them. But it's still so scary because you internalize the way the public reacts to people that you want to emulate. Totally. You know what I mean? And, and by the way, I think in those cases, musicians, different trajectory than, like, a, a 
internet personality, yeah. right? Like I, I remember when I was like many, many moons ago, when I was like meeting with random networks all over this stupid city, <laughs> Grace Helbig had like made her way from YouTube to E mm -hmm. and the show cost a fuck ton of money. Yeah. And it was flopping and everybody thought it was going to be the biggest thing in the world. And since that moment, there's only been one other time that an internet personality has gotten a real TV show. Mm -hmm. Lily Singh, mm -hmm. you know? And, like, they literally, like, the second they saw one person not do what they anticipated, right? they pulled that strategy completely. It's so scary. It's so wild. it's like you have to convince people that you are worth it, but, like, you don't even believe that yourself sometimes. So, like, that's, you know. And when you're, yeah, and when your worth is dictated a lot by data and relevancy. Yeah, it's scary. It's a challenge. Because it's like if your views are super low... You can't be like, well, look, a lot of people think I'm funny because they'll be like, well, clearly, because that's how outside people view it. They're like, well, not lately. People don't think you're funny. Yeah, it's about what you just did this morning. Yeah, it, it really and truly is. Do you improvise most of the, the acting videos you're making or are they written? Uh, no, everything. I've never written. Sick. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, it's it's fun. It, I used to be. I almost feel like I used to be better at it when I wasn't thinking yeah. that so many people are going to see it. <laughs> I get that. So now sometimes I like try to think of like a punchline before I do it or like I'll like bounce ideas off my roommates. But um, yeah, I, it's all it's all really improv. Which, by the way, I think is a blessing and a curse. Like sometimes more structure can make something better, but also more structure can also like help. Yeah. 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 Or her. It's or like her, both. Yeah. Like it's. It's so weird. Like, when you take something that is just so yours and personal to you, like, when I took my show, like, I did this radio show in my fucking bedroom for years. Like, mm -hmm. to take it from your bedroom to, like, a real radio studio or whatever, it's, like, it's, I don't, I don't know. It's a blessing and a curse because it's, it, like, you know that more people are listening. You know that everything around you is different, but also you're attached to what was because what was is what you got you here. Right. But, like, where you're at now is changing how you process and exist. So it's going to easily reflect in your art. Yeah. And then you get nervous. I get so nervous. But I try to, like, forget that I'm, like, putting it out to a lot of people. It, you'll get better. Yeah. Because this is still really new, no? It's so new. It, it happened in March. <laughs> That's March, crazy. April, May. It's been four months. It feels like a year. Why do you think people like you? Oh, my God. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. Um... I think they think I'm funny and clever. I hope that's what they think. Um, other than that, I don't I don't know. Josh Richards said the other day that you're one of the best new up and coming creators on the internet. I love Josh. Mm. Yeah. Do you? I got to know him. Um, I was just in Cannes for Can Lion. Casual. I know. It was very exciting. I said that very casually. <laughs> it was very exciting, okay? <laughs> um, but I got to know him. We talked for like an hour. And he's so smart and so knows what he's doing and he's funny and he's clever. And yeah. Do you think most TikTok content has integrity or heart or meat to it? Or is it just shallow? Like, wh What do you think people want from the platform? I don't know. I feel like that's asking almost like, do you find all TV to be shallow? Because it's like so many different shows going on at once. 100%. You know what I mean? Like, it's a content platform. So, of course, some content is shallow. And then some content makes you cry. And then some content makes you laugh. And then some content makes you scared. So I think there's just, like, a degree, a varying degree of content. Have you built a formula for you? No. I've been trying. I'm, like, I, I try. I have little, like, bits. But nothing that's really, like, I'm, like, this, I'm going to do this. 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 It's just really, like what I'm feeling that day. That's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. How are you feeling over there, Octopus? I'm feeling great. I love your hat. Thank you. I wore it just for you. It's amazing. Yeah. I, if I had known, I would have brought my puss hat. You have a puss hat too? Oh my God, yes. It's purple, eight tentacles, eyes. I wear her all the time. Oh, should I? Oh, but I have eight tentacles. Yeah, I got eight. Do all yeah. octopus have eight tentacles? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was going to say, what happened at the White House? Can you talk us through that story? Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is funny. <sighs> I was in New York, and the sky was just, like, piss orange. 
right? Because like the smoke had come in. Mm -hmm. So I'm already like, am I in Mad Max? Like what is happening today? And then the the White House was like, you want to come for a pride event? And I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> I would like to come for a pride event to the White House. And so I got on the train. I bought an outfit. I did the whole thing. And we're on the train. I'm like, so excited. I'm like, let's fucking go. Like, I'm going to the White House. Like, what is life, you guys? Like, called the girl I was staying with. I was like, not going to be home till late, like, going to the White House. She was like, wait, what? And I was like, okay, like, I'm just going to go. <laughs> and we're on the train. yippity doo da, like, da, da, da. About two hours in, someone comes. I'm like, hi. Like, I gave my ticket already. And they're like, no, um, there's a gas leak. And I'm like, a what? They're like, I gas leak. And I'm like, so what? And they're like, yeah, we're not moving. For like, and I texted my manager. I was like, all right, like something inside me is telling me we're not making it to DC tonight. He's like, no, 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 no. Like we'll be there. We'll be there. We'll move in 10 minutes. An hour goes by. <laughs> mm -hmm. I go, we are not making it to the White House Pride event. And I get off the train. I'm like, all right, let's just head home. People are ripping shots, listening to like, I got, I don't even know. I think they were listening to old, yeah, they were listening to Old Town Road, Road ripping shots, smoking cigarettes, like an actual party. I was like, oh, this kind of lit, honestly. And, but then I was like, all right, let's just go home. Like whatever. Obviously we're not making it to Washington, D.C. It's two hours away and the event started 30 minutes ago. And so we go home and I wake up and I'm like, hmm, like, God, wonder what I missed. <laughs> wonder what I missed. It's probably fucking sick. And Googled White House Pride event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. The event was can canceled. <laughs> but not only was the event canceled, it was canceled before I got on the train. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Damn. And that's my White House story. That definitely stokes your fear of being forgotten. Yeah, I was like, okay. So everyone forgot. To tell you, to tell me, yeah. <laughs> Joseph Robin and that, Biden was like, <laughs> Joe, Joe, uh, pass the what? Cancel that. Yeah, pass the who? Why is he coming? But um, yeah, it, it. But every time something like that happens, I'm like, this is just funny. But you didn't make it all the way to DC, did you? No, you made it like wherever you I were made stuck it to. I think Baltimore. Baltimore. <laughs> Baltimore's on the way to DC, right? Yeah, you know, that sounds believable. Yeah, I think it was Baltimore that I made it to. Nice. I think. <laughs> I think. It was a gas leak, you forget. But you know, I use it all for I use it all for stories. Why didn't anybody tell you it was canceled? No one knew, I guess. I'm like Googling, I'm like, are we sure this article came out in the morning? <laughs> and it's like this morning, Joseph Biden, the president, says, We're canceling. And I'm like, eh. They're like rescheduling for Saturday. Want to go? I'm like, I'm literally not here anymore. So it's fine. <laughs> All good. Is it impossible for you to date? Uh, it's always been impossible for me to date. Harder um, or easier today than it ever has been before? I, I don't know. I didn't really date that much before. So I have nothing to compare it to. I was never like, I, I went on like a few dates. Does love even interest you? So much. So much. But I'm like so in my own head that like, Going on dates is so scary. Yeah, I get it. It's like, oh my God, you have to sit with someone for two hours and talk. <laughs> and Whoa. it's supposed to be romantic, but like also is it not supposed to be romantic? And it's like weird when you're gay because it's like, okay, the thought in the back of my head was always like, okay, but what if they're just like wanting to get dinner like just to hang out? Like, you know, like you're not like knowing sometimes. Well, yeah, you figure it out. I know. That's what everyone says, but it's a, some, it's a scary thing to figure out. You just got to dive in. Yeah. You just got to see. I've been trying. It's terrifying. Yeah. It's, dating sucks. I know. It's bad. I know. But I had a great date the other day. That's good. Yeah, it was amazing. How do we meet them? Um, A mutual friend. Healthy. Healthy. No dating apps, no nothing. That's nice. Yeah, it was awesome. And are we going to see this person for a second date? Well, that was our third date. Oh, shit. Yeah, we've been going on, like, periodic dates over the past year. So, pro I, yes, I will definitely see him again if he'll see me. You've gone on three dates over the last year? Yeah, it's every time I'm in New York, we hang out. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Not exclusive? No, no. We went on third. Three dates. Three dates. Three dates. <laughs> yeah. Get there. Yeah, eventually. Slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race. It is really fucking scary. 
It's so scary. Oh my God, I hate dating. It's bad. Because you're like sitting there. And like also like I'm so manic when I'm like at a restaurant. Like it's like a known thing with me and my friends. Like the second I finish my food, like we're leaving. I need to leave. I can't sit there. I'm like staring at the plate. Like I'm getting hot. Like I'm like this table belongs to someone else. Like I need to go like now. <laughs> so I was, I was on the date with this guy and it was our third date. And I'm like putting on a show. And then all of a sudden I'm like, what the fuck? Like whatever. And I look at him and I go, you don't know this about me, but I need to leave. And he goes, Oh, and I go, no, like, we can walk around the block. Like, what I don't care. Like, I cannot sit in this restaurant anymore. He's like, honestly, okay. And then we left, and he kissed me. That's great. Mm. Yeah. He, he's gonna, You got to get it all out there, because they're going to need to accept you for you. I, that's what not, I was saying. Kind of My friend Trudy was like, I am so proud of you for doing that. I was like, thank you. Even though it's probably, like, so weird and manic and toxic. But I was like, oh. No. It's, see, that's where you're, like, getting in your own head. I think you just got to share and be you and yeah. the person's either going to accept it and appreciate it and love you for you or fucking not. Yeah. That's the, I mean, that was my thinking in that moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, and it turned out well for me. Yeah. He kissed you. Yeah. Healthy. And I listened to Sparks Fly when I got home and I was like, period. This what? is how Taylor feels. <laughs> you just posted in your story that, uh, because I liked a boy by Sabrina Carpenter, you said, I have no one to sing this about. seems like that's a lie. No, no. Because that song is about an ex. Mm hmm. And I've never had an ex. And I'm like, sometimes I want to relate to a breakup song. You, <laughs> you want know? your heart broken? I'm like, I want, I would <laughs> like that. Like when All Too Well, a 10 minute version came out, like all my friends were like screaming, singing. And I was like, Ugh. like can't relate, yeah. but like great song. You didn't feel understood. No. Well, but like I would, this song made, like I love, I just love sad songs. So I'm like wanting to relate to them to make them even better and sadder. So do you wish this boy breaks your heart? I wouldn't complain. <laughs> Honestly. So I wouldn't. I would definitely be like upset. And then I would be like, okay, well, at least they can like join the club now. <laughs> we can all finally talk about it. Again, Jake Shane just doesn't want to be forgotten. Ever. He doesn't want to be left out. Ever. Like, please don't leave me out. Seriously, please. Please. That is like the thickest through line to this interview. Yeah. You just don't. It's like the core of my being. You just want to be included. I just want to be part of the conversation. <laughs> just like remember me when you're talking about what we're doing for dinner. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even though you won't sit at the table past the food right. going it's away. It's like accommodate me and remember me. <laughs> That's called high maintenance. I know. It's like I wonder why no one does. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the person fine with your fame? I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, we didn't really talk about it at all. Are it's, people like not stopping you and asking no, you for well, photos? No, they, they did when I was with him. Yeah. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know. <laughs> That's just a reminder that he's And he was like, royalty. does that happen a lot? And I was like, kind of. <laughs> I don't know. I don't keep track. I don't really keep track. But it did happen four times on the date. So <laughs> it did. Oh, uh, I wonder, I mean, he's just still hanging around. That's good. I've scared people with that before. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very scary. It takes a certain- It, it takes, takes a certain it, person. It takes a unique type of person who's okay uh, to be around that all the time. And to be fair, like for a while, when I actually dated like girls, I guess, whatever, I <laughs> dated a super famous person. Uh -huh. and, and I'm not gonna lie, like at first it was fucking annoying. It was very annoying. But then, you know, you get really used to it. Now I do like, I do feel for- Sometimes when I'm out with people and it's, it happens all the time, but I do feel because like, you know, you don't want someone to feel inferior and you depends on like maybe what line of work they're in, like where their ego falls and like it's, it, there's a lot of factors. See you know what I'm saying? Like it takes a really unique person though at the end of the day to be down with that. I know. And I was very grateful that he was, but at the end of the day, if he wasn't, I don't think I would have been upset i think i would have just been like okay you're not the one for me that's it because i i like it i love meeting the people that i talk to online it's amazing it's like a full circle moment i love when people come up to me it makes me so happy it's like one of my favorite things so if he wasn't down for that then get the fuck out no just like all right someone break, else break my heart on your way out yeah but like tell me you hate me on the way out <laughs> Punch and me like say gun. really mean things like really mean <laughs> that you've like gained uh, knowledge about me from the past three dates, like <laughs> take that and use it and say really mean things to me, specific, 
so I can relate to a song. Like maybe you can use a lyric. I wouldn't complain. But we want to act. Yeah, but I do want to act. Let's go. Let's go. We should have given. We should have had like sides ready to go. I know, like a good monologue from Shakespeare or something. I know. I love Shakespeare. <laughs> He's awesome. <laughs> Like, I kind of believe Sometimes you. Sometimes I just say things, honestly. Um, I was just scared of, like, that I had nothing to say just now. And so I just <laughs> said that I loved Shakespeare. What's your favorite Shakespeare play? Um, the Tempest. I don't Again, know. don't even remember what it's about. <laughs> but it's the first one that came to mind. They think it's about a storm. It's not. Oh, is it not? Okay. Do you smoke weed every day? Every day of my life. In the morning or at night? What's your routine? Uh, at night. To go to bed. No, <laughs> like, um, no, like I get home and I smoke and I'm like, okay. And then on the weekends I wake, I do it all day. Yeah. And it's so horrible. Like I know, no, it's not. Okay. Sorry. I take that back. It's not horrible, but my parents are definitely like, what the fuck <laughs> are you doing? And I'm like, no, trust me. It's where my good ideas come from. Yeah, like it, it really is. It takes me out of my own head for five seconds. What's your piece of choice? Like, what do you smoke out of? I smoke uh, pre-rolls. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. That's cute. I can't roll a joint. No, I can't either. Very hard. I have, I have a tremor. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> Is that, like, chronic? Like, from, yeah. From what? Ever since I started taking my anxiety meds, it, I have this really bad tremor. Like, I don't know if you noticed it. Like, my legs shake sometimes. Like, when I sat down, I was super shaky. Oh. You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's... Yeah. So you you trying to roll joints just a mess. It would just... <laughs> I'd roll it into fucking space. <laughs> if you t go off your anxiety medication, do the tremors go away? Don't know. Never tried it. How long have you been on your anxiety medication? Two years. Okay, but did you have tremors before the two years? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so... Got it. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Figured that one out. Yeah. <laughs> but you've learned to live with your tremors. Yeah, that's part of who I am. I say ETT. Excuse the tremor. <laughs> Another personality trait. Mm -hmm. ETT, sorry. But what, what do we do if they ever go away? No more ETT. <laughs> Duh. Idiot. That's it. My bad. <laughs> I'm surprised you just smoke joints all day. I know. You know, like do a bong? You know? Well, no. no. I should, but it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. I love a, I love a joint. Just sit there, listen to music. Classic. Write poetry. Can we hear another poem or two? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he was ready to perform like that, but... Oh, I'm like, always ready for my poetry. Okay, got it. Okay, let's read. What should we read? What do you guys want to hear about? <laughs> um, what do you got in that book? Oh, but the ghosting one is my... Did you ghost someone or did No, someone, someone ghosted me. me. And I was like, what would Taylor do? Write a fucking song about it. <laughs> so I wrote a damn poem about it. Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. I like, actually <laughs> cannot... <laughs> Oh my god! Oh what? my god! Okay, you know what? You it's good. Okay, it's good. Is this a romantic ghost or what? What ghost ever? Oh, oh, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. He asked me on a date. He was like, "I'll hit you up a few days before." I was like, "Okay, like let's go." Telling every single person that would fucking listen about this, like you fucking guys. Like I <laughs> met this guy in a bar, and he were like hanging out, and. <laughs> The day comes, and I'm like, so he didn't hit me up a few days before. And then, oh my God. And then he never hit me up. And then I hit him up the other day, and I was like, what? And then he just never responded. So, okay. So, like, it's ghosts. Do you want to know? Like, like do you wonder why? Haunted. Like, did he know who, who you were at the bar? Did yeah, I think so. Oh. I think so. Or maybe he went home and, you know, Googled. No, no, no. He, I think he knew when okay. we were talking for some quite some time. So, why'd he run? I think he was probably like, this guy's a fucking freak. <laughs> like, what the fuck is wrong with him? Okay. Oh. <laughs> I can't. You, you must. You gotta know. I just need to have faith that it's good. I, I believe it. Let me just, like, go, like, look at it. Yeah, just make sure yeah. I have sick rhymes. You prepare however you need. Whatever it takes for the artist to get to where they need to be to be vulnerable in public. Why do you ask? Only to ghost me. I wonder if you too are incredibly lonely. We met at a bar. You ordered a beer. You said, I live far. I said, good. I don't live here. Do you find love on hinge or the old fashioned way? Was my excitement cringe? Did we have nothing to say? 
But now our chat is haunted. The only bubbles are blue. Was I too desperate to be wanted? Honey, it wasn't just you. But you did pique my interest to deny it would be a lie. I'll go back to Pinterest. For you, though, I won't cry. <gasps> that was fantastic. That was beautiful. Thank you, guys. That was so good. Yeah, thank you. I love poetry. I, you're, I think you can have, a, like, a poetry book. I want to. Put some poems. <laughs> um, not, you can hit that log. That's a good luck log. Oh. Knock it for good luck. Yeah. That manifestation. <laughs> okay, relax. <laughs> Don't break my wood. Um, that was really beautiful. Thank you. Th- thanks for sharing that. Of being course. Vulnerable with us. Oh, of course. I hope he hears it. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Even though I've put it everywhere. So, and read it and read it everywhere and won't shut up about it. Even though I'm like, stop. <laughs> what are you thinking, Dan? Can you talk about your Instagram strategy? I've never met someone who posts so much on Instagram. I know it's bad. It's like every. It's like you use your feed as a story. I know it's really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. It's a lot. <laughs> I know. I know. I've been yelled at. I've been like, stop. My friends are like, enough. No one cares. No one cares. I'm like, but I care. They're like, great. No one else does. Yeah, but you, you got to start doing things for you. Thank you. And that was my strategy. Great. And that was my strategy. I was like, whatever. Because sometimes like, okay, this is like so, when I post stories, this is so weird. When you move the text around, it like triggers a part of my OCD. Like I'm like, I can't, I need to put it in a really specific place. And that's like, it just like is, um, it just causes me anxiety and makes me not want to do it. And then. I found that if I just post it with a caption, I don't need to move a caption around. Uh-huh. She's sitting there right so, under the photo. So the strategy is your OCD. Yeah. Got it. But I need to stop. I know I need to stop. I'm sorry. Yeah, but is it working? Uh, sometimes. Sick. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes people are like, what the fuck? Like so- people talk about, oh my God, you double posted one day and you're sitting here like posting 18 times in a day. I know. <laughs> Do you think people are getting annoyed? Dan may have unfollowed I, you. No. Hey, don't speak. Oh, you hey. definitely did. Oh, shit, sorry. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Oh, he's a big fan. Look at his hat. It's okay. It's yeah. Fine. I'll never post again. <laughs> Ever. I just killed your career. Ever. He, he retires as of this moment. Retired. No, one day I just I just refreshed it, and I just saw like 20 pictures of you in a row. And I was like, so, am I on his page? And I was like, oh, no. Yeah, no, it's me. <laughs> that much it's me it's because when no one's answering my text i'm gonna post <laughs> oh, what? What? you but, know more than just your friends on your text message chats or following you on instagram they're i know staying. but my they're my friends too like the pussies are my friends no oh, i didn't know that yeah. they're like my legit friends like we talk all the time how do you communicate with them do you do you have like group chats going with them no i'm not in a group chat yet but we you know i dm i have this one uh this one pussy her name's grace we've been talking for like a year sick She's fucking awesome. You know, that's a big pop star strategy, right? Like, you know, using fans to get under uh, understanding and ideas and oh. cultivate relationships. Uh, you don't know that. Well, I mean, not really. Like, I, I didn't think of my, like, the way I would go about it. I, I'm not a pop star. So I never, like, looked at a pop star and was like, I want to do exactly what they did. What do you, what do you, act, you want to act, but, yeah. like, what is the genuine path then? Like, because to have a relationship with the people who view and digest your content and appreciate you, it, that, it gives you insight and understanding and perspective that you wouldn't really get, right? Because they appreciate yeah. you. How do you use that then to better your content and get you to where you need to go? Well, a lot of the, uh, like, the pussies that I have been speaking to for a while, like, have been there since I had, like, 200 followers. Which is why I was like, it wasn't really a strategy. It was literally the only person in my DM. Like, you know what I mean? Being like, wait, this this is funny. And I was like, how did you find me? And then like, we just got to talking. But it reminds, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I, the path is unclear. Maybe that's why I have anxiety. But I try to just take it day by day while continuing to make people laugh. That's all you can do. It's literally all I can do. I'm like trying to think of like a smart answer for you and I like nothing is coming to mind. Have you have you ever thought about maybe trying to record one of your poems into a song? Yes. Yes, I did. And I told my friends, I was like, you guys, I have a genius idea. And they were like, hit me with it. And I was like, recording studio, spoken word poetry album. And they were like, what the fuck? <laughs> 
And I was like, they were like, who would listen to that? And I'm like, that's not the point. <laughs> What's the point? The point is it's funny. And like, what am I doing in a recorded studio <laughs> recording my poetry? <laughs> I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Put it out there. Thank you. Nothing you think it's a better idea than my spam posting on Instagram? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you may but start like, following you again. No. Well, who who is <laughs> the thing is the thing is when you look at a person like me, like I'm probably not your audience. Who is your audience? Or I thought maybe you. <laughs> <laughs> I can become your audience again. Okay. But really, though, like, who is your audience? I don't know. <laughs> anyone that breathes. Like, I hope I, anyone that, like, laughs at me, I'm like, please, come here. Come here and sit and watch my stuff. Yeah, but doesn't that get tiring? <laughs> yeah, but that's how I've lived my entire life, all 23 years of my life. Making people laugh. That's the fuel. Just like, ha laugh at me. The please, I'm back in. The wind beneath your wings. Yeah. Are you afraid that, like, that energy is just going to deplete? Um, sh- yeah, of course. That's why... I like drink Celsius and Diet Coke and stuff. <laughs> but like emotional energy. To oh, make people well, laugh. That, oh, she's been gone. God. She's gone. We're running on fumes. Well, yeah, we're like running on like when your like tank is like on zero. But I don't drive, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> you don't drive? You're a New York City kid. Oh, yeah. And everyone's like, you cannot fucking drive. And I'm like, okay, I'll take your word for it. Have you, have you tried? So many times. Oh, wow. Like to get my license, like I've tried to. Um, like study is but that's what I meant by that. <laughs> what? Like study for the test. Okay. And then I can't answer the first two questions and I'm like, oh that's fucking stupid. I can't do this. So can you physically drive well or you just can't do the written portion? Oh no, I cannot drive. I've driven a car once. Oh wow. Um but I got into an Uber car accident when I was like fifteen. I was fine. But <laughs> the car like T boned it. And so now every single time my friends are driving me and a car is coming out, obviously they're stopping because of the stop sign. But I'm like, yeah, it's going to hit us. I'm just letting you know <laughs> right now. And like, I'm thinking like if I was driving, like I'd probably I accidentally get hit by one of them because I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> that is a hard way to live. Mm, how long? Yeah. That, that, I mean, how long ago was your accident? <laughs> 2016. Okay. You got a you had great summer though. <laughs> Great summer. <laughs> awesome. But I, I was like, oh my God, what just happened? This is so weird. And it, it's it sticks around today. Yeah, it sticks around. Your body remembers. It really does. Like my body <laughs> flinches up every time I pass a thing where it's like you could get T boned. I I tense up. It's weird. How often do you go to therapy? Okay. So um I was supposed to go last week and I posted. You wouldn't have seen it. But I posted <laughs> Um, that I'm like starting therapy today. Like, let's go. Oh, first time ever? No, 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 oh. no. I've uh, I've gone through them. Okay, got it. And I was um, I was like starting therapy today for like the first time in a year. Like, let's go. Everyone's like, so let's go. I'm so happy. And, well, I did cancel that. Yes, I did. <laughs> and then I rescheduled it for the next day, which I also did cancel. You remember? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry, I just can't. And now there's a form I have to fill out, and like it's taking everything in me to fill out. What? Oh my God. Like, I don't want to answer on a scale from one to 10 how anxious I am, but like, I can't do therapy without it. So, like, 10? The answer is 15. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't really know. But um, I'm supposed to start this week. We'll see how that goes. I'm supposed to start this week. Yeah, thoughts and prayers to both you and your therapist. No, thoughts and prayers to the therapist only. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need them. <laughs> do you believe any of this is based on luck? Like, what, what you've built? Um, yeah, oh my God. Of course. Isn't that TikTok's whole thing? Like, you're lucky if the right person sees your thing and sends it to the right person, and then it hits the algorithm. It's all based on everything's luck. But at, at a certain point, it, it morphs from luck to technique or strategy. Right, or, and I think that's what I'm working towards right now. Totally. And I think that's hard for me. But you'll get there. Hopefully. It's slow and steady wins the race. I know. It's a marathon. Though. But that's it's hard funny. to, when you're doing it real in real time, stuff on TikTok moves like this. I know. Like that. Like, I've never seen anything like it. So you're like, oh my God. Well, what do I do now? I was yesterday's topic. I get it. And then you want to have something concrete to show people, but then, you know, something good that's concrete takes like months of work. Are you working on anything like that? Yeah. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm working on, um, like, I'm trying to do like short form content on YouTube. Great. Right. In the meantime. So there's, there's stuff in the works. Most people are leaving YouTube 
and you're going oh, to YouTube. They are. <laughs> Why are they doing that? Do you know? I just I think because the audience is doesn't have the attention span. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> should I not have said that? It's fine. I'll just think about it for four days. Um, I. <laughs> Also, I'm working on stand up. <laughs> oh, that's great. I have a f- terrible fear of the stage. Like, <laughs> but yet you did musicals? Oh, yeah. But oh. like when I was in sixth grade. Got it. And so, yeah, we're working on that. Have I'm you try- tried that at all? Like getting a up musical? on stage? No, getting up on stage and doing a stand up set? I did it in seventh grade. Oh, it's been a minute. It's only been a few months. <laughs> I mean, my height hasn't changed, so. Do you write material or do you feel like you can get up there and just do crowd work? No, that's the thing. I need to do that. Got so right it. now I'm thinking about, okay, if I did a stand-up show, how would I structure it? What would I call it? How would I go about it? So that's what I'm thinking about right now. You should do this. I know. Dedicate I know. yourself to it. I think I, it's going to turn out really well. Because it's, I feel like I've dedicated myself to like 10 different ideas. Because when, when you like get any type of online recognition, everyone has something to say. Of course. And everyone's like, well, I think you should do this. And the t- me is like, I'm like, yeah. And then I'm like, uh-huh. And then I'm like, yeah. And I think everyone's ideas are better than my own. And then I like can't, I'm focusing on 10 million things at once. You got to give us your gut. I know. My gut's telling me to what, what you've just told me. Yeah, stand-up comedy. Yeah. I'm trying. Follow your gut and follow your heart. Yeah. And everything's going to work out tentacles. okay. That's it. Yeah. Wherever they point, you know. Yeah. They're pointing. Stand up. <laughs> go all eight of them yeah all eight of them are like please go now daniel final thoughts so you really have not been doing this for that long in terms of like having the big following yeah in the past couple of months do you have any like what the fuck moments like how am i here or how am i with this person yes uh when i did something with the jonas brothers what'd you do with them like oh. n- uh nick duetted a video of mine and i literally woke up to it and then the rest of the brothers followed suit and like we all collabed on a video and I was like, what the fuck is happening? Like what actually what is happening right now? Dan, they played diet Coke and Coke zero. Yes. Yes. This is real. Yes. And he really helped like fuel your success, right? That one video. Oh my God. Yeah. That, I mean, I felt like after doing that, I felt like, I mean, look, I've only, I had, I had only been doing it for a month at that point. And it was, like, the craziest thing. Like, I flew to New York, met them. Lovely. Lovely. And, um, yeah. And was it all genuinely organic? Completely. I, Nick, do edit it. I DM'd him being, like, thank you so much. Like, I appreciate this more than you know. There was another character in the skit that we both referred to. His name was Scott. (laughs) And so I messaged Nick, and I was like, oh, God, wouldn't it be so funny if we found a Scott? Like, thinking, like... You know, and I thought, correct. And he had Joe do it. And then Kevin did it. So good. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I guess it was organic. I guess I kind of manipulated the situation. but No, but it started organic. Yeah, it started completely. I woke up to it. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. One yeah. moment like that can really change everything. I know. That's all what TikTok is. It's moments that, like, change the entire trajectory of your life. Moments. So many moments. So A many. collection of moments that are fleeting. Yes. And it's frightening. It's scary. But it's the way we work. It is. Anything else, Daniel? Uh huh. So, um, I am new to the Taylor Swift world. <gasps> I'm just a little, welcome. I'm a little late to the party. But no. he's a fan now. Have you ever heard the song "Style"? Maybe. Yeah, it's a real good one. I'd recommend it to you. <laughs> um, what's your least favorite era and your most favorite era? Okay. I always say my most favorite era is um, her Evermore era. People call it the Forgotten Era. You'll learn this. Obviously, you've just joined the Swifty community. Mm-hmm. It's my mom's favorite era. And she used to listen to it while walking our dog that passed. So that's my favorite era. My least favorite era is probably. I don't know. Maybe like debut because I wasn't in the world yet. But I love debut. It's actually currently my hyperfixation. What's debut? Is that her self yeah, one? The, the very first one? Yeah, Swifties call it debut. Oh, we do? We do? Yes, yeah, we of do. Course we do. All right. I'm a, I'm a red or speak now guy. Ugh, I like the speak early. Speak now. Yeah early country stuff i'm into that yeah okay. speak now is fucking it <laughs> what's your favorite song um Shit. damn you got me on that one from speak now from speak now um <laughs> i'm gonna go with i don't what <laughs> give me one <laughs> you're, wait, you're, the, you're, um, the one, you're the proclaimed fan here brother listen i'm new i'm still getting used to this whole like ask me a question on the fly thing 
<laughs> what? He asked you your favorite song from an album you said is your favorite. I just yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, mean. Mean. It's mean. a great song. Mean. I'm a mean guy. Yeah. Love that song. Yeah. Mine is ours. Yeah. It's a beautiful song. <laughs> don't, 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 don't fuck that means. It's a great song. People throw rocks at things that shine. But they can't take what's ours. Hey, Amen. No, they cannot. Hey, Amen. Well, this was a lot of fun. <laughs> was I hope it was. I'm going to like spiral about this for like the next few weeks. Will you write more poems about it? Of course. And I'll send them to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You, I had so much fun. You are really something else. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> okay, good. I hope. Yeah. You really uh, yeah. went in a trillion energy, my friend. So thank I, you. I thank appreciate you for that. being here. Thank you for having me. That This is, you asked me about like pinch me moments and stuff. Like this is definitely one of them. I used to watch your stuff all the time. Still do. <sighs> yeah. I was going to say, I love the use to watch our no, stuff all the time. Still do. Yeah. We're old. No, yeah. you're not. But was, the Ariana interviews will always have my heart. Well, that makes me very happy. Yeah. Always have my heart. Yeah. We've done a few things that resonate there on the internet. Yeah. Crafted a few moments. Oh my god, a million moments. Yeah, but some moments do live forever. I got it. Like I, I gotta say, like as fleeting as TikTok can feel sometimes, like there are so like, and it doesn't happen all the time. But like, you really get timeless gems from f randomly scattered that like will resurface every few weeks mm -hmm. and always, no matter what, like take on a life of its own. Like yeah, Ari telling me to suck a dick. Yeah, well, um, iconic. I mean. <laughs> For years, I mean, still today, people will yell, like, suck a dick's axe egg. What about the Saddle Ranch moment? Oh, come on, yeah. Mm. Iconic. That's a good one. That, oh. I, I'm pretty sure a couple of those moments are ending up in, like, some CNN documentary about the 2010s. Like, and then, like, Liz Gillies telling me, like, uh, calling me poor. I remember that. There's, yeah, there's so many. Justin Bieber talking about his dick. That's good. Oh, or Justin Bieber yeah. talking about his love for God. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll send you a few clips. Yeah, send me. Send me them all. Yeah, there's, like, a lot. Here's a few, right? Uh, there's, there's some out there. Okay. For sure. Uh, yeah. Well, Jake, thank you for watching our shit. Thank you for having me. Jake, everything I said in this interview, just ignore it. Keep I Post on YouTube. I, keep I will post never on ignore it. you. No, no. I take back everything. So you follow me again on Instagram? I'll follow you again. Do it right on. now so you can see it. Do it right now. And not from your Finstagram. Do it from your real account right now. Okay. Well, what do, if, do it. No, do, do it. I'll do it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Shade, everybody. <laughs>